All right. Welcome, everybody. This is the Slow Pitch Podcast. And I should say hi to Lane. Lane, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. How are you, Rob? I'm doing well. See, so every time we start, you're always doing either, you know, great or fantastic. How do you do that? I... Well, a lot of alcohol. <laughs> okay. <well. laughs> you're listening to the Slow Pitch Podcast, a podcast about selling less and closing more. The one phrase that I always hear when people talk about sales is look for the buying signals. That's really important. And you would agree with that, right, Lane? Yeah, absolutely. That's what the experts always tell you, right? Always tell you that. And I, I tend to agree with them, but here's what I, I, I kind of would like to flip that on his head. I feel like it's more important to watch the, I'm not going to buy signals than it is the actual buy signals. Have you been drinking today, Rob? <laughs> maybe, maybe, but I'm going to, I'm going to tell you this one, this is an episode where we're going to talk about one of those non-buying signals. Are you ready? Let's do it. All right, let's do it. So this episode is about the non-buying signals and one in particular. Uh, and I will say this, that uh, Mr. Pete Kors, we referenced you before in a previous episode. Uh, we want to make sure that you understand that we pick you up loud and clear, your non-buying signal by not calling us. So <laughs> we, we are, there's the first non-buying signal is they don't call you. All right. So that's probably the right way to go. But this is not what we're going to talk about today. What we're going to talk about today is... Uh, I had somebody the other day say, listen, I am uh, happy to talk to you again. I know we're going to meet again. Uh, let's set up a meeting for Friday. And I said, okay, Friday it is, right? And then I said, okay. So when I, when I schedule this and, um, and I, I schedule this, I, write, I wrote in pen. Is that okay? Or should I write in pencil? And they're like, oh, no, no, pen's fine. Okay. All right. And then they said to me, would you, would you do me a favor though? Would you, would you just call me that morning just to confirm the, the meeting? What does that mean? Call me to reconfirm in the morning? I, yeah, I thought the same thing. I was like, what does that mean? I don't understand. So I was a little thrown aback. And it dawned on me, that is a non-buying signal. If you're setting up a next meeting and they say to you, hey, just confirm with me that morning because I want to make sure that I'm ready and available. I thought we were writing the dust on a pen, didn't you? I mean, when I said that. That's what he said, yeah. That's yeah. what I said. I said, I'm writing this down in pen or should I write it in pencil because it could change. He's like, no, write it in pen. And then he's... A few minutes later, it's like, or just call me that morning. Yeah, you're getting all these buy signals, and then suddenly you get a don't. I'm not buying signal. Yeah, or a little bit of like a man. I'm not so sure. Maybe it's a non-buying, but it's a. I definitely. I don't know for sure if I want to meet with you. What would you do? I, I haven't personally run into that, but I feel like you are going to turn around and go. Maybe I shouldn't be writing this in pen. Well, that was my first initial thing was like, well, let me get my pencil out, right? And I, but I, but instead, I, I said to him, I said, I'm sorry, I, I'm I'm confused. What do you mean, call you in the morning? And he said, well, call me. Just I want to make sure that I'm available. I want, something's changed. Things change every day here. I mean, are you busy every day, Lane? Well, yeah, I think we're all busy every day. But uh, if, yeah. if, if if my calendar gets that backed up, I I have no problem either going in into the Outlook and clicking decline on a meeting so that someone gets an email saying, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be doing it. Sometimes they'll even say, and this doesn't happen very often either, what they'll do is they'll say, send me a meeting invite. And then, yeah. okay, but we're confirming this now. I don't need to send a meeting invite. You, you got your own calendar, I got my calendar. I don't know why you need to need a, I'm not your secretary, right? So, <laughs> so when they say that to me, I say, well, I'll tell you what, I, I'd be happy to send you the invite, but I mess things up a lot, and particularly with that kind of thing. Like this outlook, I can't figure Outlook out. It's crazy. Do you have your calendar out? And they never go, no, because they know they looked at their calendar because they know they're either available or not available, right? And sometimes they say no, but what they do, would you mind pulling that out real quick? All right. And then I make them put it in themselves because then I know at least it's in their calendar, right? The other thing to do, sometimes <laughs> what you can do is still send the invite. And so it's fun to send an invite to somebody because guess what? It's going to populate on their calendar, even if they oh, don't yes, accept it. Will. Right. And that's why I like sending those. Yes. Yeah. And so I like to do that too, because when I know that they, we've scheduled this, we've set this up as a specific time and day, it's going to show up on their calendar. Now they may just ignore it and let it set there, but if they delete it, don't you, do you find out about that? I think so. If they say, no, decline uh, it, if they decline it, yes. Right. Well, you, they, you can, uh, you can decline, but not send anything. Right. Yep, so, yep, yep, yeah. Yep. yeah. So it's not always a foolproof, but it does give you a little bit of an edge. Um, I've even done it where I've said, you know, we're going to call and talk on this particular time of day. If I don't hear from you, I'll call you at this time. And then I just pop it on their calendar. So I say, and the title of it is Rob will call you if he hasn't heard anything by today at this time. And it shows up on their calendar and they've got to go, oh, Rob's going to call me. Okay. 
because they'll see it. I know they will. <laughs> and when I call, they go, hey, I knew you were going to call. So that's the benefit of doing that. But the non-buying signal of call me beforehand, that is a good sign or a good, good signal that you need to address that and talk about it and go through those questions. So the questions I would ask would be, I'm confused because I am. Am I, are yeah. we meeting or not meeting, right? Lane, you just asked me to put you on the calendar and then give you a call that morning. I'm confused. Why? What am I calling? What am I calling you for? Well, I'm, I'm busy in case things change. Yeah, I know. Me too. I know. I understand that. So if I, what happens if I'm, I'm, I'm tied up at that moment and I can't call you or meet with you that time? Do you want me to call you? Well, why don't you just send me an email? <laughs> okay, I could send you an email. <laughs> yeah, I've, when I've done that, people sometimes miss it, so I don't want to. I don't want to assume anything here. But listen, I, I get this. We've gone through a lot and I've gotten to know you a little bit here. I, I know I don't know you. I know you don't know your business very well. When I've gotten that kind of a response of, you know, call me ahead of time, that doesn't sound like that you're ready to, to really go to that next step. I feel like that's a really nice way of saying, I really don't want to meet with you. I am really yeah. not interested. Is that, is that what's happening? It sure sounds like it. Okay. Yeah. And they'll tell you. They'll tell you if they really don't want to. And you can laugh. You go, I, I thought so. That's all right. I, listen, I, you know, like I told you before, I'm no skin off my back. I really appreciate you telling me that because that takes, takes a lot to say that. And, and um, so I, if there's anything that we can do for you in the future, I would love to know, know about but before I hang up or before we part ways or whatever it is. Can I ask you one other question? Sure. Is there any one particular thing just so that I learn from this experience that I, I feel like there's something that I did to screw this up. Well, lay it on thick lane. Well, Rob, I, I'm not a fan of your unibrow, man. <laughs> I thought I shaved that this morning. It's just too distracting. I, I just, I just stare. I, I, I you know, know I, I get that a lot, Lane. I get that a lot. I totally understand. It was, and in fact, it makes me uncomfortable when I look at it. It should. Uh, oh, there are days. I, you know what I've done? I've removed all the mirrors in my house. I can say that with a straight face because I know that when I'm in a sales situation, I have to be serious because, but, but in reality, in my brain, I am laughing like crazy. So <laughs> listen, whatever I got to, whatever I got to make you understand that, listen, this is funny and I get it and, or make you think that, yes, no, this is serious. And my unibrow is very uncomfortable. Um, but here's one thing you should know that when I wear my glasses, it's hard to see. <laughs> so there's so there's that but all right so all right so maybe okay you gave a unibrow as an example and i like it i like it i like it it gives us something to to laugh about but there must be something else yeah i, I think your price is just a little too high yeah i get that and i and i i wish there was something i can do with that all right so it sounds like it's a total no-go right all right one other question before i leave because i saw you shake your head yes uh, the other question is, is that, you know, I get a lot of business from clients all the time that refer me to other people. I know we have not done any business, but you obviously see how my style and my process is. I, I want to make sure that we do things the right way. I want to make sure that I ask all the questions I need to make sure that I ask so that you feel comfortable that I can do the job, but more importantly, that I understand what you're looking for and what you need. I don't know, or I can't think of any other way to ask this, but I don't suppose there's anybody that you know that might be in the same situation, whether it's somebody that's in your style business or your vendors or anybody else that could use some of our services. And so what I just did was what? Yeah, it, it just seems like you're, you're trying to gauge uh, how comfortable they are with, with, with you and your business and if they would give you that referral. Yeah, and I think, yeah, it's both. It's like, will they give me a referral? Because you know what? Nine times out of 10, they don't. But that one time they give me a referral, sometimes it's really good. You know, it can be a hundred thousand dollar referral or it could be a five dollar one. I don't know. And yeah. that's one thing I have to figure out, right? But but if I don't ask, it's zero. No matter what, no matter that's what, true. it's gonna be zero. Yeah. So I have to ask. And believe it or not, sometimes they will think of you know, there is somebody that actually we just did in the conversation doing that. And but most of the time they don't. But it plants the seed so that after you hang up, they will when they see something like that or a scenario like that, they may refer you. And I've had people refer me that didn't do business with me because of the conversations we had. So I, I don't know if that helps, but it's an interesting but non-buying signal when they say, please call me before our next meeting to confirm. Because while they're, while they're busy, all of us are busy. We're all busy. We're running around hundred miles an hour every day, just trying to get things done, right? 
Yep. So are we, so are they, everybody's doing that. And so by them asking, they're kind of putting you off and nothing wrong with calling you on it. You know, I, I, I'm a firm believer of, I'd rather have you know where I stand and I'd rather have you explain to me where you stand or show me where you stand. And I'll, I'll push you until I know where you stand, or I'll push you to know that you're standing where I don't want you to stand, which is a no. And that's okay. <laughs> I'll take it because I don't, I don't need to do any more with you uh, until yeah. you're ready. And we leave it that way, which is I could use a referral if you have one and don't, don't be afraid to call me. If you have any questions in the future, you want to talk about it because it does both things. It lets them feel comfortable with you and they know no skin off their back. They're not going to give you pressure next time they talk to me. It's not going to be one of those high pressure sales situations where you have to make you feel like you buy. Right. So does yeah. that help? That helps. We'll have to talk about some other non-buying signals someday. I'm counting on it. Hey, and next time, let's not bring up my unibrow. Thank you for listening to The Slow Pitch. Do you have a question about sales? Call or text your question at 608-708-SLOW. That's 608-708-7569. Or you can email them to questions at theslowpitch.com. Slow down and close more.